Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this ThinkCar ThinkScan 662 OBD2 scanner. So this is provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So let's get this open. Here we have the manual. We'll take a quick look at it. Now one nice feature about this scanner is it's a bi-directional scanner. So it can not only read, but it can also control your car. So I'm not going to cover everything in here. You want to read through it on your own. It shows the different parts. So this runs Android 8.1. So you can use this to clear diagnostic trouble codes, real-time data reading and actuation tests. It shows the different parts. It talks about how to use it. So you want to connect it up to your OBD2 port. It shows different functions. And we have a Q&A there. So let's pull this out. It says, thank you for your purchase. And it talks about online support. So now we'll peel this off. We have a nice screen there. If we look on the top, we have the OBD2 connection, the cable connection, we have power button. On the side here, we have a USB-C port, micro SD card slot, not much on the back. So this is our hard plastic here, this is rubberized coating. Here we have a USB-A to USB-C charge cable, and we have the OBD2 cable. Let me measure it, pull the cap off here. The OBD2 cable is around 40 inches. So I'm just checking this out on my bench here, but we will take it out to the car in a minute and test it out. So let's get this charging. So you can charge this up with a USB phone charger. I have kind of a fancier one here. I'll pull that port open and plug in. Just beeped. So now I'll turn it on. I'll press the power button. I'm guessing you probably want to hold that down. Let's try that. Yep. Okay, it says the battery is at 68%. So I'll unplug it and I'll hold this down and we'll see if we can get it to boot. Okay, it's booting up. I'll go through the intro here. So it's started up. So it looks like we can use the touch screen or we can use the controls on the side. That's a nice feature of it. So this has auto VIN search. So especially on newer cars, you can plug it in and it will automatically find the VIN. Let's go ahead and hit upgrade. It says download the latest software. Now it says network connection failed which makes sense, we haven't hooked up to Wi-Fi yet, so I'll get this connected up to my Wi-Fi. So if I drag down from the top, we can have kind of like Android style settings. Okay, so I've connected to Wi-Fi, I'll hit retry again. And here we have all the different makes, and it talks about if it needs a upgrade or not. So I go ahead and hit upgrade, and it will download those upgrades. So according to the Amazon description, this has lifetime free updates. So it's going to download those. Let's go back. So it talks about some of the new features on it. And we have two different updates there. The one we were updating before is the update for the cars. And this is the ThinkScan 662 update. And it looks like it's 72 megabytes. I'll cut here and I'll let these updates complete. Then we'll take a further look. Okay, so I've installed all the upgrades. So now I'm out of my car. Let's plug this in and try it out. So my car is a 2016 Subaru Outback. So I'm in the driver's footwell. And we want to plug this into the OBD2 port. And that's going to be under the dash. So it's right back there. I have it plugged in. So this has a screen recording function, so I'm going to try it. So I'll drag down from the top and I'll hit video. I have a little icon off to the side and I'll hit record. Try that again, there we go. So it looks like it's recording. So I'm going to turn the car on. Now I'm seeing a voltage here. It's showing about 11.86 volts. It's actually charging this too. It's showing it's charging. So we're on the main page and we have an auto search function. So let's hit enter here. So this is going to do a VIN scan. It found our VIN. So I'll hit automatically search, hit yes at the bottom. Outback, let's do a health report. So it's going to scan the system. It says five system found four DTCs. So it says the past on all of these codes, I'll tap on one, we can look at it. 
So it doesn't have a lot of detail on this. Same thing, let's try the Google search. And the search it used on this was Subaru U0100, lost communication with ECM PCM. A. So it has the code and the model of the car. It doesn't look like it puts the year on here. You could add the year, but I'm guessing most of the time that won't be necessary. So I can hit the back button on the front. I'll hit back again, go back one more time. Let's go ahead and do system scan. So it shows the different systems this is equipped with. We can do system selection. Let's choose the engine control module. Let's do actuation test. Here we have bi-directional control. I'll do radiator fan relay. It says, please check the following conditions. So we want to be in park or neutral. We want to be stopped. I'll hit okay. Let's do without monitoring data. So here it says target value. We'll tap on that. We'll say start. So the fan just turned on. We can see the voltage dropping here as it's running, it's actually running and stopping. So we'll hit stop. So now we finished that test. So if you suspect you might have a bad radiator fan, you can run this test and it'll go through that to run the fan. You could start the engine up and run it up to the temperature that the fan should kick on, but that may be unreliable and you would be testing multiple systems with that, like the thermostat and such. This way you're just testing and isolating that fan. So let's go back. So there's lots of bi-directional control here. Let's go back to the main screen. Let's go back into system selection. Let's go to the engine control module. Let's go to read data stream. This is going to have lots of systems on here. Let's do a couple. So I've picked a number of things here. I'll hit OK. So now we're going to see stats on all these. I'm going to start the car up. So now we can see the engine RPM hit graph next to it, we can see a graph of this. So you can see here, I'll rev it up. And there you can see it. Let's hit the little arrow on the right here. And we can do a couple different streams at a time let's do intake air temp and oil temperature that's well that's probably not going to change very quickly so now we have four different charts at a time and if we go back to this screen we can see the different parameters so if you need to take a car on a test drive you can load this up with the parameters you want to monitor and then you can go down here to record and you can record them and then come back and analyze them after your test. Let's go back to the main page. So this also has special maintenance modes. So if we go to maintenance here, we can look at these. We have ABS bleeding, airbag reset, battery matching, brake pad reset, DPF regeneration, electronics throttle adaption, gearbox learning, anti-theft key matching, injector coating, oil reset, steering angle reset, and TPMS reset. Here we have brake pad reset. We'll hit enter. We'll choose our car. What's the ignition switch on, which it is. So it has two things here. It says brake maintenance mode before brake pad install and after brake pad install. So if I do before brake pad install, I'll hit this. It says this mode is used when you check, replace, repair the brake pad disc rotor caliper. So it gives you the instructions. We'll hit yes. It says the electronic parking brake operates automatically. 
Make sure the electronic parking brake is not applied. So I'm not going to do this right now because I'm not working on my brakes, but you go through this process. It will prepare the rear brakes for replacing the rear brake pads. And then when you're done, you go into brake normal mode and run that, and that will reset it. So if you're working on a modern car with electric brake pads, it probably has a maintenance procedure like this. And this tool can do that procedure. So if we go into more, we have settings. Now I did go in and change my time zone to be correct for where I live. It has online service, user manual, OBD fault code library, coverage list, gadget. Now if you open that up, it will give you the Chrome browser. So if you need to search for something, you can use it. Remote assistance. And then we can rearrange these different features. So that's the Think Car Think Scan 662 OBD2 scan tool. Now, as I showed on here, this does a lot more than a basic scan tool, it has the bi directional control, so you can read codes and diagnose things, but you can also do special maintenance modes or you can actuate relays and lights using this scan tool. As cars become more and more electronic, it can be vital to have a tool like this to do maintenance. Even basic maintenance like changing brake pads or bleeding the brakes, you'll want a tool like this. I found this very easy to use. I like that it has the touch screen, but it also has the buttons on the side. If your hands are really greasy, it might make more sense to use the buttons. This can be nice if you're into doing your own maintenance, but even if you don't do all of your own maintenance, if you have a problem, you can at least try and diagnose it before you take it somewhere, and then you'll have a better idea of what to expect when you take it to a mechanic. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.